Hello, everybody. My name is Simon, and I'm going to talk about tangibles on capacitive screens. So uh, if we use tangibles on capacitive screens, we have usually the problem that they can only be detected when we touch them. And this leads to a particular problem that we don't know if we let go of these tangibles if they're still on the surface or not. So the system cannot tell the difference because touch points directly disappear. Um, we actually solved that problem two years ago by creating like a um, passive circuit board, which consists of three markers, which are connected by a conductive material. And these are basically creating three touch points. So I'll shortly explain how they work and what's the problem these things are. So therefore, we have to understand how a capacitive screen works roughly. On top of a capacitive screen, we have a wire grid of uh, electrodes. And the system is constantly scanning these wires and basically can then detect the capacitive field uh, on top of the screen. And if you come closer with the finger, you interfere with the capacitive field, and this is detected as a touch point. Um, so let's have a look how these tangibles work. So this is our tangible. It has these three patterns, and they are connected by a little copper foil. And what happens here if, if we run through the scan line, and the, if the current scan line is active below one of these pads, the other two pads are basically on top of non-active scan lines. And these non-active scan lines are connected to the ground of the battery, of the display, or to the ground of the system. And since these pads are very close to these grounded lines, they ground themselves and actually ground the other line, which is currently on top of the active line. So in this situation, this point is detected, so we get a touch point here. Same thing is true for this macro pattern, and the same thing is true for these touch points. So we get basically three touch points for this. Uh, so that's roughly how they work. So over the last years, we found basically two big problems with this approach. Um, the first one is adaptive filtering. If you place a tangible on a screen, uh, something like this happens. So you place it on a screen, it is detected, and after a while, it's removed. Uh, this also happens when you put your finger on the screen for a while and don't move it, it also gets removed on most of the touch screens. That's just a filtering algorithm. So what happens here? So we have our tangibles again, again, and we have three touch points. If we move the tangible around, everything is fine. We get three touch points. They are constantly detected. However, if we don't move it for a while, like roughly 60 seconds, depending on the screen, uh, they are removed. And we are back to the problem again that we don't know if the tangible is still on the screen or not. Uh, if we start moving a tangible again, uh, we get the touch points back. So we have to figure out a way to detect the ten to make sure that the tangible is still on the surface or not. So there are several ways to do that. We could use like some external hardware to uh, have a camera looking at the screen or something like that. But actually, what we wanted to do is to make the tangible smart enough that the tangible actually knows if it was placed in a capital screen or not. And therefore, we used actually these scan lines that I just showed you before. And the tangible can actually sense these scan lines. So what happens here is we put the tangible on the screen, and it can actually scan, see these scan lines and wait for these scan lines. Uh, so if you look at the scan lines, they have like a nice uh, peak, where, which can easily be detected by some edge detection, very simple electronics. And they have a fixed frequency, which can also be used to determine if you're on the screen or not. If you look at multiple scan lines from multiple screens, you see they're kind of different, but each of them have like a clear peak and a fixed frequency. So we can just basically adapt these, um, our filtering or, or detection algorithm depending on which kind of screen. We can actually detect on which screen we are currently placed. Um, so how does our tangible work? So to make it work, we added uh, a field sensor, which is basically can detect these, these signal patterns and a Bluetooth element that allows us to communicate this information to the system. So as soon as the tangible was placed on the table, uh, it tells the computer via Bluetooth, I was placed on the table. And if the micro pattern is found from the tangible, we can actually say, OK, this tangible is detected, and it's that tangible. Since we get a unique Bluetooth ID, we know which tangible it is. So if now the touch, are, uh, the touch points are filtered out from the algorithms, uh, we still know that the tangible is still on the surface because the tangible didn't tell us that it was removed. If we start moving again, uh, the touch points reappear, and we can use uh, the position, uh, the detector position orientation of the tangible using just the normal touch points of the capacitive screen. Uh, and again, if we remove the tangible from the surface, uh, um, it tells us, OK, it was just removed from the surface, and we can get rid of it. Uh, so that's the first problem uh, that we solved. So now we can actually detect constantly tangibles. However, there's a second problem. And this is happening when we have this alignment. So in this alignment, you see that we're currently scanning the lower left pattern. But the other two patterns are non-active non uh, markers. So they're basically on the same electrodes. And they, so they cannot like, decrease the capacitance of the screen. 
So what we get here, we only get two touch points. So we get the Bluetooth information was placed on there, but we get only two touch points. So now this is a problem. Uh, we don't know if the tangible is orientated like this or it is orientated like this. So we have to figure out a way to determine the orientation of that tangible. And what we did, we add another sensor in the tangible, this blue dot. It's basically a light sensor that can sense uh, the brightness of the screen below a certain point of the tangible. And we let actually the, the tangible ping, this tangi uh, the table ping the tangible to identify the orientation. So we ping one spot, we ping the other spot, and we wait for a response from the tangible saying, okay, I see a color change. Depending on when we get the response, we can then tell the orientation of the tangible. Um, the same approach we can use if we place two tangibles with the same marker pattern at the exact same time on the screen. What we get here is we get basically four signals very, in a very short time frame. We get two marker patterns which are identical and we get two Bluetooth IDs. So we have to have figure out somehow which one is what. And therefore we can just use the same approach and ping one of the tangibles and wait which one is responding and we can get the results. Okay, this one, the perk one responded, so this one is perk one and the other one is perk two. So now we can actually identify identical screens. So we don't need different uh, touch uh, patterns to identify different tangibles. So we can use the same touch pattern for all the tangibles that we want to have. So let's have a look inside these tangibles, how they would look. So as I told you, we have this marker pattern consisting of three conductive uh, pads. Uh, we have our light sensor, uh, which allows us to scan for uh, um, the position. We have the field sensor, which picks up the signal. There's a Bluetooth element, which is communicating to the system, and a small microcontroller, which is doing all the work, basically, but mostly uh, doing nothing while sleeping, and a battery, which allows us to run the tangibles for like five days in a row without need to be charged. So it does not consume a lot of energy. So, uh, but we actually wanted to know how good this is working. So we created this little robot who placed the tangible on the screen for a long, long time, several days in a row. Um, and we wanted to test how good is the detection rate of our system, how long does it take to be detected by the screen, and how accurate is the detection. So we made a test configuration. We took one of the tangible, the smallest tangibles that we can build that was detected. It's about four by four centimeters. It depends a little bit on the screen type, but the four by four centimeters works basically on all the screens that we tested it. Uh, we made over 70,000 trials. And we also rotated the tangible so that we have these angles where we only detect um, two touch points to see if our system is actually working. We tested it on three different touch screens, uh, a Microsoft 55-inch display, um, Perceptive Pixel 27, and an iPad. Uh, for the following, I'll just show you the results of the Microsoft display, but they are essentially the same for the other displays, small differences. You can find them in the paper. So detection rate, the field sensor, the good news is the field sensor works all the time. It always t told us that it was placed on the surface and it was removed from the surface. So this is pretty nice. Uh, however, we have an overall detection rate of 98%. So we lose some trials where we couldn't detect a tangible. Uh, and this is due to the marker pattern. And if you look at, so there's a number of touches that we get detected depending on the angle. And we actually can see th four areas where we only detect uh, two or less touches in that point. So for three of them, we can actually lose the light sensor because we got uh, two detected and we can use the light sensor to determine the orientation of the tangible and then works fine. However, for this fourth one, uh, we got mostly one touch and this is a problem um, since we don't know where to bl blink the system so we didn't know what to do and said so this is the error rate. The problem is now we didn't really understand why this one is different from the others. So that's something that we have to figure out uh, in upcoming work. So about average detection time, it's about 50 milliseconds uh, from the time the tangible was placed until it was fully detected, so that's quite fast. However, if we look at the uh, uh, different angles, we see at the moment we are using the light sensor, the detection rate goes up, the detection time goes up to 160 milliseconds, which is kind of long, but as soon as you start moving your tangible again, it, all three touch points are detected and detection time goes down. This is just for placing it, not touching it again and everything. Um, yeah. Uh, the average position error is 1.5 millimeters. So from the position, that's actually kind, kind of good. But if you look at the data for the different angles, it suggests somehow that this depends on the orientation of the tangible. So if we encounter that in our error correction, this could be a thing that 
could be improved even further the detection rate. So uh, let's talk about future work. There are a lot of things that we could improve. Uh, one thing is probably get rid of the light sensor because it's kind of slow and we have to wait, we have to ping this tangible and we have to wait for a response of the tangible. One of our ideas is not to use one field sensor but to use multiple field sensors. In this case, we use three of them and what we get out of this uh, for, for preliminary results is basically these are the scan lines that we got. And to determine, so we can actually see in the different time delays, we can see the different time deltas, we can detect the orientation of the tangible directly from the field sensors. However, this is currently like ongoing research because there's a lot of fluctuation and adaptation, uh, but theoretically it works, it has to be some, some engineer's work. Okay, well that's, I want to sum up. Um, we extended our passive markers with uh, active components. Uh, the field sensor allows us to uh, detect the tangible on the screen. Uh, all the time, even as it's filtered out. Our light sensor was able to help us when we didn't get detect the entire field sensor. And the good thing is that we have now a Bluetooth communication inside the tangible which allows us to have a unique ID, even if we have the same marker pattern. With this, I want to like to thank you for your attention and happy to answer your questions. Thank you, um, Simon. Um, <clears throat> are there any questions? We have one here. Hi, I was curious on the graph where you show the um, detection rate uh, versus the angle. Yes. Um, which device was that being used on, and did you try to cross multiple devices to see yep. if there was something this was, different? This was on the 55-inch display, and uh, you have the different grid lines. So on the 55-inch display, the, the grid lines are shifted by 15 degrees. And on, a, for example, for an iPad, you have like a, uh, you don't have like you have a line grid, and then these positions just shift by 15 degrees. So, but essentially they are the same, they are just shifted in different angles. I think we have a question here. Uh, Rong Hao from Taiwan University. And I was wondering, can you use the light to infer the hub? Excuse me? Uh, can you use the high sensor to infer the height of hover? Uh, so, do you mean the use the field sensor to show you at which distance we are across on top of the screen? Uh, yeah. yeah, you can actually do that. So it's currently yeah. calibrated that it can detect the, the signal by one millimeter above the screen, yeah. but it actually detects that way higher if you calibrate it like this. And how about just use an IR sensor instead of a light sensor? And yeah, the problem is LCDs are not creating a lot of IR light. In okay, I so see. So we also, we tried that, but it didn't work out really well. Okay. Uh, because LCDs are made for not using IR light in a way. Thank you. Uh, Deepak Vambar, Inter Interlabs. Um, can you speak a little bit more about how you're using Bluetooth LE? Are you using RSSI? Yeah, we just use a uh, slave master module, the standard. Nothing. Right, so let's say you kind of place it on the surface and not move it for 60 seconds. Are you kind of relying on the fact that it's still paired and connected to say it's still on the surface? Yeah, it, it, it just pings one. If it's connected to the screen, it just tells one, it just sends one information, I'm on the screen. And the next information that is sent out, I was removed from the screen. Okay, I'll speak more. Okay. Do you have any more questions? Over there. How often does the initial placement um, actually not have any movement? I, I, I feel like, is there any perceivable measurement of movement when like a human would place the token on the screen or is it not enough to detect? Um, so if you, what the robot is basically simulating, you drop it on the screen and you hold it on the screen. That's something that usually does not happen a lot. So we try that, we have like one of the students dropping this thing for a long time on the screen and the detection rate is 100% because it always moves a little bit. So the robot is basically doing the most, the worst case scenario where it puts it on the screen and holds it on the screen. And if you like just put it on the screen, you always have a little bit of movement. So um, if you have a movement, about two millimeters, then it, it gets detected again. So um, it's a rare case where you just didn't move it at all. Thanks. Um, I actually have a question for you. This is a kind of crazy question, but it combines the previous talk with this talk. Has anyone ever considered uh, uh, doing, uh, changing the capacitance uh, within the block? 
uh, for, I'll give you an, an, a use case a scenario. So if you have these like robotic, like let's say you've got wheels in it or something and you want to actually actuate these things, um, would they not die as well? If you, yeah, we actually tried that. This was our first approach to change the capacitance or to let yeah. the, the things blink to yeah. get rid of the filtering. Uh, didn't work that well no. because you have a really have to have an exact timing when the scan lies above you. So you can you create a lot of touches, but not at the point where you want to create it. Right. So you can basically light up one of these scan lines because the timings <laughs> inside are so fast that we couldn't really rely on that heavily. So we could light, we had a tangible that light up the entire screen, but never on the place where we wanted to go because the screen thought it scanned a different line currently because it's so fast. Okay, thank you, and let's thank our speaker one more time.